Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in today's video we're going to see if this little box here can make any light switch smart to power lights like this here in my garden. So thanks for tuning in to another Spectrum Geeks video. As mentioned in the intro we're going to be looking at this. It is the Sonoff Mini L2 Extreme. Now I've bought this because I've recently installed these external lights which we'll go into in a little bit more detail in a moment but they're not smart they are integrated LED lights and I wanted to have the ability hopefully to kind of integrate them into my hue light system which is kind of my system of preference so based on the bit of research I did this seems to be like the item that we want so we're going to unbox it talk a little bit um, about the device my specific use case we Ideally, it's going to connect this straight up to the Hue Light Hub, but we may have to use the EWE Link app for Sonoff to get it all configured up um, correctly. So, like me, you're probably looking at this device because you know you have a light switch, be that internal or external, and you want to make it smart instead of buying smart light bulbs. And this is basically what this device can do. So, this Sonoff. Um, extreme or mini l2 extreme costs around 20 pounds here in the uk there will be a link down in the description to the spectrum geeks amazon store if you decide you want to pick one of these up as you can see it's really really small and that's important here in the uk because we don't have much room behind the light switches and also it does not require a neutral which is also something that is key here in the uk so as you can see really small form factor so it's 18.4 millimeters thick 39.5 millimeters wide and 32 millimeters tall so you can check out those dimensions before you uh, try and fit them behind a switch i have seen some people squeeze these into a ceiling rose but uh, i think they really are meant to be put behind a light switch so as mentioned I bought this house and the previous owner around 15 years ago had put wires into the walls to be able to fit some lights at some point but never ever got around to them and recently with my electrician we tested all the wires and got things wired up connected up to a switch and they do work and again like I said I bought these integrated lights I was looking to get some hue ones but they are ridiculously expensive and thought be much cheaper to do something like this um, the device itself again it is zigbee 3.0 but it can only be used as a zigbee end device so it's not going to do any meshing or routing or extending of your existing zigbee devices just an end device there so as mentioned zigbee 3.0 it is using an efr 32 uh, mg 22 chip um, consumes around 0.2 watts when it's in use in addition to the lighting system it's lighting and when it's off it's actually negligible it doesn't show up on my meter at all so really really low um, it does have a ampage restriction of six amps so it's a six amp relay in here I actually think it's an eight amp relay but they say um, to limit it to six amps um, as I mentioned no neutral so perfect for here in the UK and the advantage of this is as well as making your lights smart, you can still use the light switch. So one of the arguments my wife have very regularly is she might turn the light switch off, it disables the smartness of my hue lights. Whereas the advantage here is you can still use the switch if you want to. It's not dimmable though. So if you're looking to use this with lights that are dimmable, um, you'd have to look for another version, which I don't think is currently available. But if you just want to turn things on and off, you should be able to do that. As mentioned, my plan here is to not use it with the EWE Link app. I hope to use it with the Hue uh, app directly. But I know lots of people like to use the Zigbee 2 MQTT app. Uh, not something I use, but it is already recognized um, by that app. Um, so you don't have to worry about trying to hack the firmware or anything. So this video is a little bit of a how-to, but I'm not an electrician. I am comfortable working uh, on electrics and we'll cover a bit of that in a moment always practice safe isolation so make sure your power is turned off 
And if you're not comfortable doing electrics, speak to your electrician, get someone who's qualified and knows what they're doing to wire this in. So let's jump over to my external switch and see if we can get things wired up. Okay, so hopefully you can see what's happening here. I will zoom in in the important bits so you can see in more detail. And please excuse my gash. Uh, I cut myself whilst doing the tiling yesterday. So first thing to do is obviously open up your fuse board. Obviously this is right next to where the switch is, so easy for me, but make sure you isolate um, the power. So here is the one from my outside lights and it's currently off. I do reckon, recommend also using some sort of tester as well when we get to that. So this is a switch I have um, here right now that we're going to be replacing. So I've already undone the connections. So be able to pop that off. And again, we'll just check there is no power to here. So this one already does have some neutrals here. So again, I could use a different type of switch, but again, if you're using this in the house here in the UK, we don't have any neutrals running to the switch, just the live and the switch live. Um, don't get too hung up on the wiring in here. As mentioned, the previous wires that were run here, um, there were three core, I guess, just must have been what they had left over and obviously it's older, so the colors are slightly different. There are some instructions that come in the box with this that give you some information uh, on what to do. So I'm just going to get things wired up um, and then we'll zoom in to explain what it is um, that you need to do and how to do it. So again, here in the UK, you're going to have some neutrals that are hopefully terminated uh, into your back box, especially if they're metal, that's very important. Um, you may or may not have the neutrals here, uh, which are the blue wires, um, but you will probably have um, brown wires or maybe red um, if they were the, the older wiring for your live and switch live. Okay, so the first thing I'm actually going to do, get this out of the box. I'm just going to double check that it is going to fit inside this box. As you can see here, there's absolutely plenty of room for that to kind of switch and sit back. There's even a almost a dedicated space <laughs> that I can put this in to the side and glue that if I wanted to. Okay, so one of the things we need to do is just make sure that the terminal blocks are open. So nice small screwdriver, just make sure it fits in there. Ample room to get our cables in. So you can just see there, it should just all be nice and open. Like that, if I can get it to focus on the right thing. There we are. Okay. And then the first one we're going to connect up is the live in so um typically that is going to be what's wired in to your com um connection in the back um of your switch so you're going to see that probably as a, a permanent um, brown cable so we're just going to unplug that and wire that in In a moment, we are going to have to connect up, um, obviously, the switch again with some other cable. So here in the UK, the typical lighting switch is um, two core, one and a half mil cable like this. So we're going to strip some of that down and be able to use that up uh, in here. So just connect up the live line in. Again, because the connections are so small on here, we probably need to cut back um, the cables a little bit so that we don't have any bare wire exposed. Okay, so with our switch live now in, we are gonna connect up the switch out, which will connect up to where the light is. So again, for me here, this is just on my L1. This is basically gonna disconnect the switch altogether. So that's now out of the way and connect this in to the live out. Then we can put the power back on and the Sonos should have power and we can then hopefully connect that to the app and we'll be able to show that um, we can connect things and power on the lights and then we can isolate the power again and connect it up to the switch. Okay, so that's all wired up. So now we can turn the power back on again and uh, hopefully nothing goes back. Okay, 
It's going to be very hard to see and show on the video, but I will try. There is a little green LED um, flickering on the Sonoff, so it has got power to it. And uh, yeah, so we hopefully compare it up in the app. So uh, let's look and see how we do that. Okay, so it takes a few seconds for the device to kind of boot itself, I guess. Um, but now if I just press this button once, you can hear the relay click and the lights have turned on. If I obviously press it again, it uh, will turn off. In terms of configuring with the switch, which we're gonna look at uh, in a moment, by default, it has the ability to have a rocker switch, which you know, is your typical switch we have here, a rocker switch on and off, or a push button switch. Um, so depending on what you have, I think it's set up for a rocker switch as default. If you quickly press that button three times, it will switch it into a push button switch. Um, so it can be working with either of those. So let's try and see if we can get this to pair with the app. And uh, yeah, see if we have to use that EWI link app or not. Okay, so after some fiddling around, it turns out that this switch does not work natively with the Philips Hue bridge. So I think it's to do with Philips partnering with certain companies to do the Friends of Hue thing um, and Sonoff is not with the Friends of Hue. So what I have done is I've dug out my old SmartThings Zigbee hub, I've connected that up, gone through the process and basically have got it connected. You can see here on the side that um, when scanning the little uh, QR code at the back it didn't come up um, natively so I just selected to install the Sonoff smart switch and now it is all paired and set up so I can control the switch either through the SmartThings app and also uh, on the switch at the front here when that's all set up as well so I'm going to do a couple more checks to see if there is a way that I can integrate the SmartThings uh, with the Hue Hub so I can really connect everything through the Hue app because I'd also like to be able to use the Hue uh, motion sensor I have out here to activate these lights as well. So um, I think we're nearly done. We will um, look at wiring up the actual physical switch now and then box everything back up and I'll do that extra checks to see if there's a way I can get the, the Hue stuff working together. I may have to just do it all through the Amazon Echo. Okay, so once that's done, you are pretty much finished. You could just leave it like that, pop the sewn off back into the socket, put the cover on and you're good to go. But the reason you probably went for this is because you still do want to have a functional physical switch to avoid arguments with your other half as to who turned the light on or off to stop the smart features working. So for this, we will just get um, a couple of pieces of um, 1.5 mil uh, twin nerf that we can use to wire in the switch into the sewn off. So again, we'll just trim up the wires, connect it to the COM and L1 and uh, wire that in. Again, we will turn off the power to that socket um, so we know there's no power there. One thing I have noticed that the capacitor or whatever it is that's in there does retain power for quite a while. I'm not sure you can pick it up on the camera, but if you should be able to hear the relay click even though the power is off. I found you need to press the button around nine times to get rid of all the residual power. So I recommend you do that before messing with any of those terminals. So let's just get this wired back in to the switch and we should be good. Okay, so the switch is now wired in and working. So I basically just connected up um, COM to S1 and then S2 down to L1 and everything is working uh, properly. I did have to do the triple click on the pairing button though to switch it from uh, like a touch button to a switch button since it was uh, in the wrong mode. But now it's all working absolutely fine. If I click this on, the light's turning on and turning off and obviously via the switch and the app as well. So I'm just gonna close all this up, get it all in there nice and neatly and then I'll just do that extra check to see if there's a way I can get um, things working exactly the way I want them. But that's pretty much it.
Okay, so this project is a semi success. So the Sonoff is in, as you can see here, I can control the lights via the Smart Things app and I can set up some routines and things to get that all working. And I think, so I remember I did this many, many years ago. I did used to use the Smart Things hub quite a lot, but then kind of stopped using it and ditched everything from there because it kind of got confusing with Smart Things controlling Hue and all the other kind of stuff. But I'm pretty sure what I can do later is I will add in the hue lights I want to control, hopefully selectively, into the Smart Things app and set up the motion sensor and then have the motion sensor turn on the kind of in roof lights I have here, little lamp down the end, and then these um, lights on the walls as well. And I do a separate uh, video on the hue motion sensor in the future where hopefully I can have all that. Uh, working as I want but hopefully this video has been interesting and helpful so again definitely think this little um, small sewn off works really really well if you only have the um, Hue Hub though however you know the Philips Hue Hub it's not going to work with it you need some other kind of Zigbee hub that's going to be able to support and work things like the smart things but there are um, cheaper alternatives available please ask any questions or leave any feedback you have down in the comments as mentioned if you want to buy one of these you can get one from our amazon store it doesn't cost you any more but does help support the channel and with that in mind if you want to consider supporting the channel more for just 99 pence per month you can become uh, a youtube uh, spectrum geeks member and it'd be much appreciated so hope this video helped hope it's a bit interesting thanks very much for watching as always until the next video take care of yourself and goodbye for now.